All right, good evening, everyone. It's really nice to be here um, back with Designers and Geeks. I've been a member since, like, I think the very first or the, maybe the second Designers and Geeks when it was much smaller, and it's been amazing to see it grow so well. Um, so I'm SC Moati. I'm, um, I've reinvented myself quite a few times. Here they come. I want to project. So, um, my, my, uh, my past, I, uh, I was born in France and, and grew up there and moved to Silicon Valley uh, after I got my engineering degree. And since then, spent most of my career in mobile <laughs> uh, at companies like uh, Facebook and Electronic Arts, uh, Trulia and Nokia. And a couple of years ago, actually five years ago, um, I, I started a company, so I became an entrepreneur. Uh, my company grew and eventually was uh, acquired as a talent acquisition by Facebook. Spent a couple of years at Facebook. And when I left Facebook, I didn't want to go back into a traditional career. And so I decided to reinvent myself. Fast forward two years, I'm a published best-selling author. I teach uh, mobile and growth at Stanford University. I'm also a partner in a venture fund. And... Um, you know, I'm, I'm now speaking with you tonight. Um, so uh, what I want to talk about uh, after JC's great talk about the future of work, I want to talk about how you can also reinvent yourself. And if you want to ask questions, I have some books that I can uh, give away some of my books and I'll sign them for you. Okay, it works. It shows something completely different <laughs> here and here. Um, okay, so that's me. Now... Yeah, it's a tough world out there. And why am I saying that? It's a tough world because if you look at the stats, uh, millennials are going to have 17 different jobs in their career. That's a lot of jobs. <laughs> and that's a lot of reinvention. And then when you talk about, uh, you know, you talk to companies, um, the, the best quote I have here is the, a quote by the uh, chairman of Cisco, John Chambers, who said when he was running Cisco and he ran Cisco for about 20 years, he said he reinvented the company completely every five to 10 years. And he said that now the CEOs that he talks to, he tells them to reinvent their company every three years or so. And so when you reinvent a company, you also have to reinvent the people who work at that company or the people who are suppliers of that company. So that's a lot of reinvention right there. And it makes for a really tough world. But the good news is that actually you can do it. You can reinvent yourself all the time. What I say is, uh, and, and the, uh, the analogy here is, we're, we're going from a, a, a trend of being madmen to, to being math men, or I like to think math women. Um, because everything we do is very measurable, right? We have careers, we have results, we become more and more business oriented in the way we see our work. And yes, we want to work a certain way as Jesse described, but we also become a lot more goal focused and career oriented in the way that we think about the life we want and the impact that we want. So, um, let's, let's start with that. Mike, who is the designer? And who's a geek? Ah, oh, we have a lot more designers. Okay, so let's speak designers. So um, a lot of designers, when I, when I speak with them, say, oh, you know, I'm a designer today, but I, I really want to become an entrepreneur. Um, so let's speak that as a case study, right? And, and you can apply that to, to everything. Well, that's a goal right here, right? Moving from being a designer to being an entrepreneur. Now, um, that's probably the most important decision you need to make when you want to reinvent yourself, which is set a goal for yourself. How do you set a goal for yourself? Uh, you know, it, it's really like a lot of what JC was saying. You, you want to work on something that you like. Now, um, the most frequent obstacle to doing what you like is impatience. <laughs> so how long do you think it takes to go from one career to another? Anybody wants to take a guess? Two years? Absolutely. Here you go. You get a book. <laughs> that's the great answer. <laughs> it, ta it takes a while, right? So that's a great answer. Like a, a lot of times I hear people say, no, it takes just three months. No, no, no. It takes a long time. Why? Because you got to you know, decide like, okay, I want to become an entrepreneur. So what does it mean to be an entrepreneur? Okay, you're going to have to go talk to some people. Like, how do you start a company? Like, what does it mean to run a company? What does it mean to hire people, to start making money, to, you know, what product? 
So you're going to start to, you know, to talk to a few people. And then these people are going to tell you, well, I was an entrepreneur. You're going to talk to JC. You're going to talk to me. I was an entrepreneur. This is how I did it. And then you're going to map your own path and, you know, compare it to like other entrepreneurs' paths. And you're going to come up with a gap analysis. Okay. So if I want to be a successful entrepreneur, here are some of the things that I'm missing. And then you're going to have to fill these gaps, right? And we, you can fill these gaps with some training. You can fill these gaps with some mentors, but it's going to take you some time to get this training, get these mentors. And finally, get to the point where you have all the, you know, all the skills and all the checklists you need, you need, or you feel you need to become a successful entrepreneur, designer, you name it. Now you're there, and what happens next? You're actually not there, right? Because you need to find the right opportunity. So if you want to be an entrepreneur, you need to find the right co-founder. You need to find the right idea. You need to have like a perfect storm so that things actually start to take off. You may have to go through a couple of iterations. If you're looking for a role as a designer, you may want to work for a subset of companies, and so it's going to take a little while for these opportunities to come and be available to you at the right time. Now, you could tell me, well, see, I really don't care. I just want to become a designer, or I just want to start a company. Well, you don't want to do it this way. You don't want to just like get any job as a designer. You don't want to just get any idea or any business as an entrepreneur. You want to feel that you're taking something that you're passionate about, right? You don't want to be that person who has this rifle approach who's going to say, oh, if it doesn't work out in two, in two months, I'm going to change, right? You want to be the person who says, this is my vision. This is what I want to do. This is how I want to make an impact in my life. And that may take some time. So by the time you've gone through all these steps, it's going to take you um, at least uh, several months if, um, or probably more uh, closer to a year. So that's how you define your goal. And once you have a goal, <laughs> so by the way, like this slide, I, I use it when I, uh, when I teach uh, user growth. So, you know, you have your goal to grow your business and then you map everything into a funnel so that you reach your goal. Does that sound familiar to some of you guys? Just a few. Okay. Not too many. All right. Never mind the analogy then. So, so you, you know, you want to become a designer or an entrepreneur then everything you're going to do is going to lead towards that goal. So can you guys give me some examples? You're going to try to look for clients, yeah. What else? You're going to, go, you're, you're going to network, yeah. So you're going you're gonna to look for a market. You're going to look for partners, employees, network. What else? You may look for funding. Why would you want to look for funding? You may, you may not need it. But OK, funding. What else? Ideas. OK. What else? Yes. So. That, that funnel is, is, uh, is basically saying, I want to become a designer or I want to become an entrepreneur. Everything I do is basically going to lead me towards that goal. And that's a really important thing. So I'll give you an example. A lot of people go to networking events like this one and, and they either love it, like, cause they like the social aspect or they, or they really hate it because, uh, they, they feel like, you know, they may be a little bit introvert like I am and they're like, oh my God, too many people today. So how do you network effectively? You network effectively when you have your goal, right? You go and you say, look, I'm looking to find some customers or I'm looking to find some funding. And so you go and you talk to a bunch of people and you try to identify people who will help you get closer to your goal. And when do you succeed at a networking event? You succeed when you have at least one person who helps you achieve your goal. That's a win, right? You can follow up with that person and they get you closer to your goal. So set your goal, and then everything you do then contributes toward your goal. Now, that actually um, sounds like a plan. Like most of the people who you know are looking to change her say, "Yeah, I want to become a designer. I'm going to do everything I can to you know become a designer." But honestly, after a while, it gets really repetitive. It gets really boring. It has diminishing return. Right? You can only go to so many networking events. You can only find so many early customers until you need to, you know, get to the next level. So, 
I'm going to share with you a couple of ways that you can actually accelerate your career transition. The first one is a uh, shortcut. So a great shortcut, I'll give you a personal example. Uh, when I joined Electronic Arts, I was working for a very boring software company before that. So it took me a year to you know, erase the stigma of that boring company and finally get into like a cool gaming company. How did I do that? I put a big marker on my resume that said, oh, I'm a, a gaming entrepreneur. So there was the, you know, on my resume, boring software company, very cool gaming startup, which, you know, was kind of a failure, to be honest. Um, and now Electronic Arts. So that, that shortcut, right, that entrepreneurial project, which wasn't necessarily a real enterprise or, you know, was maybe a fail uh, startup, was a way for me to shortcut the transition to joining the gaming industry. Um, there's plenty of examples of people who do this and then uh, become experts, right? Like they take a shortcut to um, getting into the industry that they're interested in by just like pretending that like they're already in that industry. Another example that will help you um, shortcut your uh, transition is um, positioning yourself as a, a marketplace or a, a central uh, point of reference. So I'll give you another personal example. When I started my last company, I had a number of um, potential co-founders who wanted to work with me. And I wasn't quite sure that these were the right matches. And it's a pretty big decision, right? You're going to work with these people for a long time. You want to make sure it's the right fit. You're maybe also not quite sure what your skills are and what their skills are and if they're compatible. So I started an organization called Founder Dating. It's not a online dating. It's a, a professional dating, which matches co-founders with, you know, other co-founders. I knew nothing about what co-founders look like or you know, what, what they want or uh, how to find a good co-founder. But I ended up talking with literally thousands of founders and looking at their resume, looking at what they wanted to do, interviewing many of them. And by the time I had done that, I had a crystal clear picture of what pretty much any co-founder is looking for or the different parameters that co-founders are looking for when they want to start a company. And the other thing that it did is not only gave me a very clear picture of what I wanted to do, but it also made me um, a, an expert in the community. So I had all these, you know, um, many, many founders come to me and say, hey, help me find a co-founder. And guess who got first pick, first pick at, you know, finding the best co-founder for their venture? I did. So that, that I call a, a hook. And it's a great way for you to basically say, hey, you have my problem and I'm here to help you solve the problem that you have, but that I also have when I want to manage my career transition. So a career transition, it, it takes a long time. It requires your full focus, and then you have to be creative, find some shortcuts, find some hooks. So it can be actually really, really draining. Uh, some people were asking me earlier, like, you know, how much effort do I need to invest in making a transition in my life? And so you want to give it your best shot. You don't want to leave anything to chance because what will happen if you do is you're going to have, you know, regrets and it's very hard to live with regrets. But at some point, you really have to let it go. Thank you.